Okay, this lesson is about atomic structure, which really is entirely um, review from grade nine. So I have put this handout up on our OneNote. You can either copy it all down now or print the handout and then fill in as I'm doing. So the first section here is just a review of the structure of the atom. So I'm gonna ask for you to label, pause the video and label this diagram um, as best you can using terms that you remember to describe the parts of the atom and the particles that make up the atom. Then check back with the video when you're finished. Okay, so you'll see that I labeled the neutral or uncharged particles in the center of the atom, the neutron, and positive particles in the center of the atom, proton. You'll see the electrons are labeled in the shells or energy levels or orbits, those concentric circles around what we call the nucleus, that cluster of neutrons and protons. <clears throat> now in terms of relative mass, neutrons and protons are essentially equal to each other and the electron is so much lighter than either of those that it would essentially be like a fleck of dust on your shoulder if you stood on a scale. You'd see what your what the scale reads when you step on the scale and if you brush that fleck of dust off your shoulder, it wouldn't change the reading. And that's how light the electrons are compared to protons and neutrons. And so the nucleus is where we find most of the mass of the atom. And because of that, we will use the sum of the neutrons and protons to tell us the mass of the atom. So we'll add neutrons and protons to get what we call the mass number. Okay, so can you identify which element this atom is representing? So you have to think back to which subatomic particle is equal to the atomic number and in doing so identify the element. Hopefully you recall that it is the proton. So in fact there are three protons here and that's what tells us that this is an atom of lithium. Okay, the mass number, as I said over here, because most of the mass of the atom is found, essentially, we're gonna say the electron's mass is negligible. We can really just add the protons and neutrons to get the mass number. So three protons, four neutrons, so that tells us a mass number of seven. And the number of protons, the atomic number, is our subscript here in the element notation. So. You'll see we can label these here that, that this is the element symbol, that the bottom number here is the atomic number, and that the top number here is what we call the mass number. So again, the sum of the protons and the neutrons. Now the atomic number is always, always equal to the number of protons, but not always the number of electrons. Certainly in a neutral atom, the protons and electrons do equal each other, but for an ion, the electrons are different. And so don't memorize or, or stick to the idea that the atomic number has to be the same as the electrons. The atomic number is always the number of protons in the nucleus, always and that may or may not be the same number as the electrons. Okay, so you've seen this familiar element notation now. There's another way that we can represent that atom of lithium. We could say lithium-7, so lithium-7. And what we're communicating there is that this is an atom of lithium with a mass of seven. So it may surprise you or not to know that there are other atoms of lithium with different masses, for example, lithium-6. So how does a diagram for an atom of lithium-6 look different than that lithium-7? Think about that and give yourself a quick sketch in the space that I have here on the right. So give yourself a quick sketch that would look like this for the lithium um, atom with a mass number of 6. Hopefully you still drew three protons because it's still lithium, but now the mass is six. So three protons and three neutrons together would give us a mass number of six. There's still three electrons, no change, right? It's still a lithium atom, number of electrons and protons are the same. 
Okay, so now we'll approach the table here. You'll see that the element or atomic notation is provided in the first two lines. And then you're asked to name the element and indicate the number of protons and neutrons. So we're just focused on figuring out the particles in the nucleus. <clears throat> so hopefully from your earlier knowledge, you know that capital B represents boron. And atomic number is the number of protons. So we're looking here at the five. And number of neutrons, well, the mass number right here is made up of the protons and the neutrons. So if we know there's five protons, then 11 minus five will give us the six neutrons. So I don't want you going to the periodic table to round the mass that you see on the periodic table. I'd like you to first understand where that comes from, and we're going to be referring to specific atoms of each of these elements. So the only thing you would look at the periodic table for to complete this table would be the atomic number and element name or symbol. Okay, so you should be able to complete the rest of the table without looking at the or using the mass from the periodic table. Okay, so give this a shot. See if you can problem solve and work your way through the table and check back with the video. Okay, so the second line was completed the same as the first. PB is lead. The atomic number here is 82, so there's 82 protons. And we subtract the mass minus atomic number to get the number of neutrons. Then I was told the second or the third row here, we're working with tungsten. So I look up the symbol and I see the atomic number 74. So that's the number of protons. Protons and neutrons together equal the mass number. Helium has symbol HE and atomic number 2, so there's two protons. So I saw the atomic number from the periodic table, just like the 74 from the W. With two neutrons and two protons, we have a total of mass number 4. Atomic number 26 from the periodic table I see is iron, Fe, 26 protons. Subtract mass minus atomic number to get the neutrons. Bismuth, I find the symbol is Bi and atomic number 83, which tells me 83 protons. Again, atomic number plus mass number gives us the, sorry, atomic number plus, plus neutrons, so protons plus neutrons gives us the mass number. Here I'm given the number of protons. Well, I know that the protons is always the atomic number, so I can find the atomic number of 47, see that it's Ag, which is silver. Again, protons and neutrons add together to the mass. Atomic number 10 in both these cases, so these are both atoms of neon, symbol Ne. With atomic number 10, there's 10 protons in each atom, but with different masses, I see that when I subtract in both cases, 10 neutrons and 11 neutrons here. Okay, and that moves us into drawing bohr rutherford diagrams. So Bohr's contribution was the electrons in the shells or energy levels and Rutherford's contribution was the nucleus. So you've just through that table figured out how to do your protons and neutrons for the nucleus and for Bohr with the electrons we just have to remember the filling pattern of 2, 8, 8 and so on. So the first shell is full with two electrons then eight electrons and we continue. Okay let's draw Bohr-Rutherford diagram. So you'll remember uh, here's our atomic notation. So now decide how many particles of each protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. So hopefully you're thinking 17 protons and then 35 minus 17 gives us 18 neutrons. Now we have 17 electrons to complete and we could draw these complete circles and put two electrons in the first shell and then put eight electrons. Typically we pair these up in the second shell. And then we need to draw a third shell and draw seven more electrons. Now, that takes a long time, fair bit of space on my page. It's perfectly fine to abbreviate and draw a quarter circle, if you will, for each shell and just label the number of electrons there. And even more convenient is to draw what we call a Lewis symbol 
which takes the symbol of the element and shows dots for the valence electrons only. So valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell. So in this case, seven electrons, so seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I didn't have to leave the single unpaired electron on the left side. It could have been top, bottom, or right. But typically when we're drawing these Lewis symbols, as long as you don't have more than two on the top, bottom, left, or right, then that's fine. As we get into bonding patterns between atoms, we will sometimes have three electrons on the same, um, in the same location there, but I'll show you what that looks like later. Okay, so Bohr-Weatherford diagrams and then a quick introduction there to Lewis symbols. We'll be practicing these diagrams in class. Okay, now the last concept here is isotopes. So I'm asking you which two atomic notations in the table above represent isotopes. Well, I guess it would help, first of all, to think back to our lithium-7 and our lithium-6 examples from the beginning of the lesson. The idea here was that these particles were both atoms of the same element And think about which, sub, which subatomic particle is the same if they're atoms of the same element. What does that mean? Same number of, well, always protons. That's right, because an element is identified by its atomic number, and the atomic number is always the number of protons. So isotopes are atoms of the same element with different what? I mean, they're both lithium. What's different about them? Lithium-7, lithium-6, what do the 7 and 6 represent? Hopefully you remember that, they're the, that those are the masses of those atoms. So, they're different masses. Why do they have different masses? Think back to the subatomic particles that are found in the nucleus. They have a different number of neutrons. You can go back and look at the diagrams you drew at the beginning of the lesson. So isotopes are atoms of the same element, meaning they have the same number of protons, with different masses, i.e. different number of neutrons. So to answer this question, which two atomic notations in the table above represent isotopes? So scan through your notes there, check out the table, okay, and circle the two that are isotopes of each other. Okay, hopefully you came up with neon 20 and neon 21. And I'll just show these in the other notation, so you keep being familiar with that. Notice same number of protons, different number of neutrons, both atoms of neon with different masses, 20 and 21. Okay, that's it.